Hi everyone. I wanted to share a story with you and um, I want to uh, attribute it in the right way. Um, some of you may be familiar with Martin Buber who was uh, a scholar and philosopher of the 20th century and um, one of the uh, areas of focus for Martin Buber was the Hasidim. He uh, wrote several books about Hasidism including a collection, several collections of tales called the Tales of the Hasidim. And um, I had the opportunity to be online yesterday uh, for a, a webinar with um, Rabbi Bill Plevin, uh, an old friend of mine from uh, back at JTS, who did a really wonderful job. He's a, a scholar uh, of uh, Buber's thought. And he shared a variety of sources which I thought were really beautiful as they relate to what we're all going through right now. And to be honest, I really just want to read this to you and say one brief word. Here's what he says. Here's what uh, Buber writes about the uh, Hasidim. He says that there were several mitnagdim, these are the uh, group of Jews who were opposed to the Hasidim, and uh, they came to the rabbi of Rizhin when he was passing through their city and complained to him, and they said, in our congregation we pray at dawn, and after that we sit wrapped in our prayer shawls with tefillin on head and arm and learn a chapter of the Mishnah. Not so, you Hasidim. They pray after the hour set for the prayer has excuse me, they pray after the hour set for prayer has passed. And when they have finished praying, they sit down together and drink schnapps. And yet they are called chassidim, that is pious ones or devout ones. And we are called adversaries, the mit nagdim. And he wants to know why is this? Why do the chassidic customs, why are they so different in this way? And the rabbi said this, the truth of the matter is this, You know that ever ever since the day our temple was destroyed, we pray instead of making sacrifice. And just as the sacrifice was disqualified, if the thought was impure, so it is with prayer. That is why the evil urge, the Yetzir Hara, devises ruse upon ruse to confuse one who prays with thoughts alien to prayer. Now, for this, the Hasidim have invented a counter-ruse, to trick him. After praying, they sit down together and drink to one another. L'chaim, they say. Each tells what is burdening their heart, and then they say to one another, may God grant your desire. And since, so our sages say, prayers can be said in any language whatsoever, this speaking and answering of theirs while drinking is also regarded as prayer. But all the Yetzirah sees is that they are eating and drinking and using everyday speech, and so he stops bothering his head about them. What I thought was so beautiful about the story that Buber and Rabbi Plevin relayed is um, this idea that um, this sort of talking, this sort of sharing, this sort of interaction and unburdening oneself is like prayer. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, in the future or even now we should cancel our davening and not pray. Instead, we should just chat. It's not about chatting. It's about real human interaction, which is really the hallmark of Buber's own thought, which is, I'm sure, one of the reasons why he decided to put this story in his Tales of the Hasidim. At a moment like this, you know, after a week like this, as we prepare for Shabbat, where so many of us have felt um, somewhat isolated, have been unable to see people, to touch someone, to give a, a friend a hug, we are struggling And I think many of us are struggling mightily and in productive ways to bring people together so that they can unburden themselves. So we can talk to each other online, on the phone, we're reaching out to people. We are really doing these tremendous acts, which I would normally just think of as, not just, but I would think of as chesed, as acts of love and loving kindness. But I think the story puts it in another framework. In fact, these uh, interactions, unburdening and listening to each other, and hoping for each other's comfort and uh, best, it's prayer in a certain way. And so as we get ready for Shabbat and um, hopefully uh, peace uh, for the 24, 25 hours of Shabbat, I hope we'll look forward to another week where we'll be able to reach out to people, to share ourselves and have them share with us so that we can exchange those words of prayer as Buber uh, refers to them. Shabbat Shalom.